Hey guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the second season of the Melee Stats Podcast, starring me, Save is Untitled. Me, Edwin Budding. And me, Oven. And Oven is back again, again. And Edwin is back from being engaged. So do you guys want to jump into the weekend recap of all the fun things that happen in this quiet weekend of Melee? <sighs> yeah, well... <laughs> sounds so excited, Edwin. First, uh, well, I'm... I'm just a little perturbed in what the melee community considers good beef now. We used to have th- we used to have things like Leffen versus Chillin, dude, and now we're we clamored over Fendi Scar, and now we're now we're going crazy over Fiction Ginger. Like guys, they've had one set. The Trash Talk's not even that good. I think the melee like, community just clinging on. We there's like no tournaments. There's like no. We all think we're gonna die to ultimate. This is all we have, Edwin. We're just like well, fiending at the scraps. <laughs> if there was good beef, we'd be paying attention to it. Well, I think that there, it's not a lack of tournaments. Like there, there, there. It's like I think it's the the lack of like a, a national tournament yeah. following following something like summit. But you never know. Um, don't park in the grass is gonna be pretty big. I don't know if it'll be. It That's probably be won't be national tournament. Or yeah <laughs> just factually speak factually yeah. speaking yeah I, I don't know dude i i just think that like people are jumping on this beef but, like if you really think about it like both of them have played only one set with each other like they they can talk as much shit online as they want about it but like if if it really was a good beef like set up a set up an exhibition money match or something you know like why does a what it, it's just limited to twitter trash talk are they and both J- going to be at Dome Park? I don't think Ginger is. Yeah. Um, I'm fairly certain Fiction is going if he's not registered right now. And what, what particularly with like the the trash talk beef? Are you not liking? Like, what do you think? What you think could be done better? I think this. Uh, I want to hear what Oven has to say after this, but it's just like mostly passive aggressive callouts on Twitter from Ginger. Like a few snarky, funny responses from Fiction, but the responses are empty because they've only played one set and Ginger won that set. You know, so it's just it's just a lot of su- it's just a lot of uh, noise and not not enough substance behind it. Like Ginger is more so playing like the "ha ha, I beat you" card, and Fiction is like, "Oh, you beat me when I was playing bad, but I'm better than you," and it's like this circular. I don't know. There, there's no there's no depth to it. Oven, what do you think? Uh, well, the first I heard of this beef was when you told me to look it up for this show. <laughs> so that, that says a lot about the yeah. beef. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I mostly agree with Edwin. There's like, it's funny that they turned it into like arguing about whose losses were worse or <laughs> yeah. who's ranked higher. It's just like the, the other thing. Oh, I want to mention this point. Um, Ginger brought up like the the fact that he was he was ranked for for this year and that fiction wasn't, but but fiction wasn't ranked because he he was inactive for a lot of last year, mm-hmm. right? So just mentioning that doesn't really doesn't really make much sense to me. Yeah. And yeah, I know again like I know it's it's just trash talk and he's not like trying to be like accurate or whatever. But I don't think there's a doubt in anyone's mind that fiction is probably going to end the year ranked higher than Ginger. Mm-hmm. I, like, think I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Even though Fiction had like the week first uh, half of the year, Ginger's had a super weak second half of the year. Maybe his win against Axe, people will ignore everything else bad that Ginger's done the rest of the year, but probably not. And Fiction deserves to be ranked higher than Ginger. How would Fiction? You... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Evan. I, think I was gonna say, to throw it's so, us. it's so, it is funny because Ginger reminded me on Twitter that Fiction lost a fluid. <laughs> like he's got a lot of bad losses. <laughs> Early in the yeah, it's just it's so absurd looking back. It's like how did how did this happen? <laughs> if the two were to play again, who would you who would you have winning? Especially after watching the 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 set that they played, it went to game four, game five, game five, game, game five. five. Yeah, it was like Ginger strong and then uh, Fiction strong for the next two games, and then Ginger slowly pulls it out. How would you expect the next uh, time they meet to go? I want to hear what Oven's answer is. I'm I, I'm too. Uh, I I could see it going either way, but Oven, convince me. Uh, I'm going to convince you that Ginger is going to win, and it's going to make this beef continue to be boring. <laughs> because he's oh, you think say, it'll be more boring if Ginger wins? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I feel like Fiction is one of those players that you don't really want to antagonize too much or, like, give him too much shit. Because he's definitely the kind of guy that will, like, study you until he knows your soul. So I predict that if they play again, Fiction will win 3-1. He, I think he'll lose the first game off, like, the, just because he needs to... Getting like, hit by I, side B. Yeah, I was yeah, going <laughs> I think he'll lose the first game and then soul read him and destroy him the next three. Yeah, I th- I also think it would go in Fiction's favor probably three one because I those first two games I think without did he get side B spiked in both uh, game one and game two? I think he got side B spiked in both mm-hmm. those sets. It was I think with either of those not happening, I think Fiction could have won that set easily. Like those those game four and uh, game three and game four were so dominant dominant dominated by fiction like i think fiction wins for sure next time they meet. i mean to, to to give ginger credit like he did win game five but the end of game five was also kind of kind of sus yeah like it was, it was a weird fiction chance. just made a mistake near near edge and then got suicide dunked for it yeah and ginger like to, to again to his credit like he's no slouch in the box matchup this guy this guy practices with or he has he's played so much with kjh you know like if if there's any fox that like will teach you to play it play like as reactively and on cue as possible and like really discipline your play like kjh is a pretty good training partner for that kind of stuff right so it's it's not like ginger is completely unprepared or that like he's a huge underdog against fiction Mm -hmm. you know yeah um so do you want to move over to talking about japan after talking about the worst beef ever uh, Edwin, I, I know that uh, you're not really the expert on Japan, but you know a hell of a lot more than I do. Uh, could you kind of give us a, a little bit of an insight on what happened at Battle Gateway this weekend? Sure. So um, just, just for reference, I want to give a special shout out to KB, who is our resident Japan and Asia Melee expert. Um, I, I talked to him a little bit about this before the show, but j- just to start off with, people, you know, when they when they think of Japan Melee, they they think about something, or they think about like a player like Amsa, obviously, mm-hmm. but they think about like Rudolph also from the past, or even or even someone like Gucci or or uh, may he rest in peace, Flash, the <laughs> Japanese Sheik. But um, this year, for for a lot of the battle battle gateways and a lot of like the bigger Japanese tournaments, it's kind of been like. This really cool rivalry has been brewing between Shippu, the continent or the the country, the national peach, and Sane. And Sane has a uh, Sane's gotten a lot better over the last three years. But one thing that uh, one thing that K K told me was that uh, Sane is the only fox that has ended nearly every single year he's been active with either a positive record on Amsa or being the only one with a with a, in his region with a win on Amsa, which is really impressive. And last year, um, according to Kay, Sane finished with a three and two record against Amsa. So again, you know, this is one player and character matchup. So I, I don't, I'd be lying if I said I knew how good Sane's play would translate to the states or somewhere else. But that is that is a pretty good that's a pretty good sign for him, and it's a good sign for the talent in Japan. Well, we may be able to find out because Sane is coming to Genesis Six. Yeah, he 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 is going to Genesis Six. That's right. So him winning this tournament, really cool. You beat a top ten player in the world. No, no matter where you're from or how active you are, that that is definitely worthy of being noted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did uh, Captain Jack when he he came stateside for a couple of tournaments? Like he was at Boss Rush. There was like a Boss Rush for him, right? How well does did he perform? Because I'm trying to say maybe we could go off of him and kind of gauge how the rest of Japan would perform. But I guess it's, it's still like really hard trying to compare, especially with us not being the most knowledgeable about the seed. So I'm not that knowledgeable about his results off the top of my head, but Captain Jack got like he made it out of pools at Evo. He got like top one, top one twenty eight. I, I think he got like ninety seventh or something. Um, I don't know. I don't think he's had any like really big wins. He's just kind of beaten strong local players in the different regions he's he's went to. He's probably like upper mid level ish for Japan. I want to say like getting getting top eight this tournament definitely very very good for him. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I I don't think Captain Jack will make top like obviously he's not going to make top hundred this yeah. year, and I don't I don't know what his ceiling is. But for a, a formerly retired legend to come back and do moderately well, and and obviously just do impressive in his region is is a good sign for him. Yeah. 
you guys have any more comments on Japan or we get to move on to talk about Donkey Kong, which I was still, I'm still kind of very confused about Donkey Kong's weekend. So the reason I want to, the reason I want to mention this specifically is because a certain someone on this podcast uh, would be very angry if I didn't mention it. And uh, I'm talking about Pikachu, obviously, who was, he was here last week. But last year, last week was just a strange weekend in Melee. So I'm going to, I'm going to name a few results and you guys are going to tell me what you think. Um, Ringler defeating Okami BW in hybrid. Hyper, the Zane Slayer. So that's already... <laughs> so Ringler's better than Zane. Yeah, Ringler's basically. a top 10 player. So much basically. character diversity, guys. Ringler, if Ringler won Shine 2018. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, a lot, a lot uh... of that. Tutran, <laughs> get this. Tutran defeated Zamu, but also defeated Cobb. So this is not like Tutran finding a fast follower and just happening to combo him, like, enough times in the set this is him beating like a borderline top 100 or or just outside of it peach and two train if if you got if you guys have heard his name it's probably because you recognize him from his set at the big house where he almost beat hug or he took hugs to two really really close games oh oh yeah and to top off the weekend rotisserie deluxe aka shoulders was his other tag won the pgh arcadian so I'm going to ask you guys something. Uh-huh. How good is Donkey Kong in Melee? Really bad. <laughs> Even match up with Samus, right? And 60-40 against Fox. This is, this is like... Combo game's so good. DK is, I, I think, my, the, my only high-level analysis I can give on DK is it's fun to play in friendlies. Like he's basically like when you're doing your Captain Falcon is doing too well against your casual friends, so you play DK, so you can still have that fun combo game, but still feel a little fine about playing against your garbage friends. That's all I really have to say on him. He's still bad. Um, I'm looking through who the other players were at the Arcadian, and uh, well, there's like Bambi. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's mid, it's mid level talent, regional yeah. talent. Yeah, it's, it's still I like... the, the other two are more impressive than that. Yeah, uh, I think Donkey Kong's it's Donkey Kong, dude. Uh, <laughs> Insightful, I, <indie. laughs> dude. I, I get a feeling when like when when non DK players talk about or when, like non DK or non top players like imagine Donkey Kong, they don't imagine someone like playing him seriously. They imagine like that time when we were all 13 or like 12 or whatever playing a hundred man melee oh, and just use, <laughs> just using DK stuff. I, I get a feeling that people who don't like take the game, like to take DK too seriously. They just imagine that for, for DK. <laughs> you know? I'd love to see that in like a low level stream match where it's just someone sitting there. It's a Fox just trying to approach. and just keeps on getting hit by the downbeat. Dude, DK is just such an absurd character. Like I, I, I sometimes can't believe that he's in this game. Mm. Yeah, I just went to look at the tier list and I saw he's 17th. I was like, that seems kind of low. And then it's like Young Link, Mario, again, And I was like, yeah, that seems right about the place. Like he doesn't, he doesn't seem like the 17th worst character. And then you realize there's totally 16 better characters, probably more. I, you know, we're kind of in this weird age of uh, DK romant- romantic, <laughs> romanticism. romanticism or whatever. Like, I, like I'm seeing people in the chat talk about DK being a good mid tier. What are you guys talking about? Just, just, just hold a shield, dude. Like, it's not good. Like, it's not good. He's, like, I guess he, he has, he's like a good disjoint on his back air. Uh, he can be annoying for Samus, I guess. Yeah, uh, annoying for Marth too, I guess. I, I don't know. The highest I could see him is like fifteen, fourteen. I don't think I could see him higher than that. Do you guys think we'll ever see a top hundred like dedicated solo DK main? I'd hope not. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I mean, I'd feel bad for that person. <laughs> like, I think that if it looks like there's going to be one, we need to cancel SSP and rank. <laughs> <laughs> Make it an algorithm. It no, goes against <laughs> DKs. I. All right, here here's a good thought experiment. Mm-hmm. Let's say Rishi mains DK. Let's say he 
he lives and he goes he finally just decides he to fully do DK. it like he like he, <laughs> he, goes he, lived, off the he yeah he goes off the deep end <laughs> is like guys i can't i can't play my other characters i, I gotta just go dk what is his or, or any or any top player that wants to do it like maybe west balls what if he does it what is his like best potential bracket <laughs> i don't know i would imagine who, a bunch of Westfall's actually beaten with dk yeah, in like a set it'd be a bunch of like spaces i'd guess but i remember one time he like won a tournament like a local in socal with dk but i don't know if i he think he beat i think he beat reno or something that's what i was thinking <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like the best move is gonna be something like reno or maybe like a fast follower it's like yeah well I think uh, could who's who's like a borderline top hundred chic, like just outside, just outside. Mm. You know, I think West Ball like, so, like so... take the exact same losses playing DK than playing Falco. You take those weird off the wall. He <laughs> probably he can put up similar results. Probably not against no. Nizro. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. West Ball's DK hasn't gotten better. Like who is half a tier worse than like Vortex? Or like uh, how's Heartstrings? Yeah, they're saying Fizz. No, or... I I I think Heartstrings and Fizz would wash Wes's DK. I'm sure Fizz has played like Cyrox's secondaries or like weird mid mid or low tier secondaries. God, I almost said mid tier. I almost caught myself. <laughs> or I almost said, or I did catch myself. Uh, okay, this is such a stupid hypothetical. I, I don't want to think about a top hundred player mating DK for. I don't know why I brought this up. It's just you did this to yourself. You wanted to talk about the DKs, but we we all agree that this is not indicative of any sort of future for Donkey Kong in the melee meta. No. Yeah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it, even if it is, like I, I I just am willfully being blind on this, and you know maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. <laughs> what if DK is just secretly the twelfth best character in the game? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> DK has like a great matchup on Jigglypuff and the Hungry Box counters now. Everyone starts playing DK. Dude, that I, so bad. Okay, <laughs> so one of my friends in in a in Yukon, he he used to main Jigglypuff before switching to Falco, right? Mm. And this was one of his his uh he he wasn't very good at the game, mm. but this was one of his like formative moments as a as a competitor. So he went to Apex 2015 and uh played a it wasn't Chandy. I thought it was Chandy, but it, it was someone else. He played a DK in tournament, I think. And the whole time, as he was playing Jigglypuff, he, again, he wasn't very good Jigglypuff. He just kept getting he just kept getting a hit by DK back air, and DK up air kept killing him at like absurdly high percents. Like he'd get cargo thrown or something upwards, and like for whatever reason, he just keep getting caught by DK up air and dying like re at really low percents. And at the end, uh, and at the end of the set, like he asked the guy, and he's like, "Dude, I've never played a DK like you in my life. Like, how, like, how do you play DK?" And he's like, "Oh no, man, DK Puff is free. DK can't lose." <laughs> and, and like, my friend was so mad about it that he like went home and like, st like after the tournament, was just so mad about losing the DK that he just looked up characters that like beat DK, and he found Falco and was like. Okay, I'm mating Falco from here on out. I'm never <laughs> touching this piece of shit character yeah. Puff again. This is back in like 2015. Uh, now he doesn't play melee anymore. So maybe if he hadn't lost that DK, everything would be different. Maybe. It's a tough matchup though. 730. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about the intricacies of DK Puff. I'm not even gonna. I'm not trying to get a bunch of DK mains in this chat angry at me oh man all like four of them oh shoot all right four do you want to move chat. on to the speed round yeah i sure. enough of this this is... <laughs> this is what happens when there's no melee to talk about no the, the, the thing is there is melee it's just all regional results like it's, yeah, yeah. it's... locals don't matter <laughs> the oven size said it all <laughs> All right, welcome to the whatever annual, 28th annual Melee Stats. Well, I guess it would be like... 28th annual? <laughs> <laughs> We've been going for 28 years. Before Melee came out, we were just like doing 
doing stats about brawls in the street melee. <laughs> Just on like live leak watching fight. Who's <laughs> the top one? On... Never mind. Okay. Let's so, kill this right. Melee stats, speed round. You guys know the rules. Uh... Save, can you. Does one of the questions involve Donkey Kong? It can. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're all, they're all going to be Donkey I'll just replace everything with Donkey Kong and make it much more interesting. I thought you were going to say I'm going to replace everything with Dong for a second. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, wow, dude. Come on. All right. We're just going to start off the speed round, Edwin. You're going to go first because you made us talk about Donkey Kong for so long. Fair. Um, fair. I. Okay, no, this is, I wanted to change it to a Donkey Kong one, but we kind of already talked about this. Um, in oh wait, no, uh, okay, no, we no, fuck, we already talked about both of these things. Damn it, <laughs> that's okay. Two, just okay. In the the next set of Fiction versus Ginger, who wins, and by how how big of a margin? I think Fiction wins three one. Uh, in the in the last set, he was playing super. Sl he was playing really sloppy. I think part of that is because Ginger was controlling center stage really well, and uh, Gin Ginger also just like reacts to fox very quickly and will always like like he, he won't get hit by really stupid things i think but fiction knowing him he will study their set endlessly without watching ginger's analysis of the set of course <laughs> and uh he'll he'll win three one pretty softly all right Alvin, what do you got uh i think ginger's gonna win three two and this time he's gonna he's gonna win the last two games by side being <laughs> fiction <laughs> instead of the first two innovative question i'm going to give the point to edwin because he gave a better answer uh going on to the next one because uh maybe uh previewing our next week's big highlights that we might talk about soon there's gonna be a couple of ultimate questions uh so at hungry box's first ultimate major how does he do what 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 does that look like you could just talk about how he's gonna place who he plays how it goes of in europe first he is going to win melee. He's going to beat Leffen again in a very sad set. And uh, that's it. I'm not going to talk about ultimate. <laughs> All right, Edwin, what hand, head cannon do you have? Okay. So my prediction is that he's going to win a set. He's going to tweet about like ultimate being really cool and how he's excited and how melee players should really, uh, should really like, give it a shot. He's gonna run into a Donkey Kong or a Diddy Kong next <laughs> round. He's gonna, good. he's gonna, he's gonna get like banana peeled. He's gonna get shot. He's gonna get camped. Then he's gonna go into losers and play against an ice climber player. And I don't know if you've seen any footage of the ice climbers in Ultimate, but they have a desync. They have like pseudo chain grabs or whatever. Not that. And at the end of going one two, he's gonna like treat about why Ultimate is good if you like it, but how melee is better, and then go back to melee and never enter a tournament. I think Edward gets to the point on that one. You should you should have said a Donkey Kong would have beat him though. It's a, even in Ultimate, it's gonna be oh a matchup. No. It's gonna be a really tough matchup. I can't matchup. escape. <laughs> yeah, it's like a combo against Donkey Kong. There's no way to escape. It just keeps going. He's too good. All right. <laughs> Keeping it a bit on the ultimate train, uh, starting with you this time, Edwin. Which melee player is most likely to main Piranha Plant in ultimate? This question comes to you from Ambi Sinister. <laughs> I can't front. I could totally see West Balls just playing Piranha Plant and going ham, like like trying to find the craziest Piranha Plant tech. Like maybe maybe he does something where like like I can imagine one of Piranha Plant's moves or something being like shrinking into the. What, whatever he's in, like it's a pot. Plan. A pot? But, yeah, a pot. Yeah, Wes, that's my pick. Right. <laughs> Evan, what do you have? Uh, piranha plant. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with mango. I think mango's gonna gonna do some crazy shenanigans with piranha plant. It's probably gonna be some stuff with those those balls that he shoots out and the poison gas. Did Mango ever enter a Smash Four tournament? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so. it's. I don't think it's likely. Did West Bulls? I think he and Lucky will play it on stream for like two hours, laugh, and then never touch the game again. I remember. I remember seeing a clip of him playing Shulk. I'm gonna, That's it. I'm gonna judge who gets this point by if. Mango has no, he has zero Smash 4 tournaments. Yeah, I was pretty sure he how didn't. Many, oh, he has a 
considerable amount of Project M ones, which is surprising. And one Brawl tournament. He won. He won Beast Five for Project M. It was like a sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's his crowning achievement in his career. Oh come on! A <laughs> <laughs> uh, man didn't win a major this year. Let him. <laughs> let him. <laughs> Don't beat him while he's down. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give it. I'll give it to Oven to make for making Mango feel like he could win something for the first time this year. Okay, I actually just looked up West Falls in in Smash Four, and he, it has one result for him, and he literally got last place. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. All right. And it was at one of those Xanadus that he went to. I love Wes. All right. Let's just we'll move on to the next question. Uh, back to Melee for a little bit. We're back to Melee for the last two questions. And Oven, you're starting. Um, so uh, who will be, as we were talking in the pre-show, the main character in the Book of Melee 2? Who is, who is the main storyline we're going to be following to in the sequel to Edwin Budding's hit story, hit novel? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's got to be Rishi. Like, there's there's no one else it could be. It's it's Edwin's idol. Rishi's gonna Rishi's gonna come up. He's gonna beat Mewtwo King again, and then Mewtwo King's gonna leave, and then Rishi's gonna beat more people. Probably people you can beat with Marth, like Leffen or DK, or D. <laughs> or <laughs> oh come on, dude. <laughs> Okay. Who's gonna uh, be in Book of Melee to you, Edwin? Well, Who's considering I'm line? the person I'm the person that would be most likely to actually I I'm the person that would be most likely to write it, so I feel like I should actually like like really <laughs> only my answer matters here. But <laughs> no, I'm gonna this, this I'm gonna works. I'm gonna say that Ambi Sinister fine. I'm gonna say that Ambi Sinister finds a way to be involved in the Book of Melee V2. He will uh, switch from Fox to Ice Climbers eventually, entering tournaments as Fly and Benita, <laughs> and defeat everyone, and the world will not know the menace in which it unleashed. Uh, Alvin gets the point because he indirectly mentioned DK in his answer. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, I see. That's fair. Okay. I, I see the. Yeah, I see well, the theme. You know, but... the, the Rishi I don't want really that good. point. Yeah, you're gonna take it anyway. Um, and finally, uh, Edwin starting for the last one. Uh, so Wombo Combo, the 10th anniversary of that is coming up soon. Uh, but if you could take any melee video and replace it with Wombo Combo, have it have the same widespread knownness, like the amount of views, what melee video would you plug in the place of Wombo Combo in the collective consciousness of everyone who's seen it? Mega Armada 2.4, definitely. This is like this is a set that's considered the great the greatest of all time for a really good reason. It it features two of the it features number one and number two of the of Melee's all time great players. There's so much of it that like encompasses like what makes Melee awesome. The open bracket style, the international like rivalry between Sweden and America, um, just like a Swedish teenager coming out of nowhere and almost beating the game's best player. And the game's best player at the time just making a huge comeback like with the sickest rest read of all time how could it not be that imagine if if, if more people knew about that kind of appeal then uh melee would just imagine like how much bigger melee would be if everyone knew of its best set ever that's a damn good answer of him how do you follow that up i, I don't think i can <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I'm just gonna give it to Edwin. That's like pretty much. I pretty much agree 100, percent and I don't want to like. I don't have like any jokes <laughs> or donkey. I was waiting answers. for you to be like. I was waiting for you to be like Leffen chilling dude five <laughs> five o or something. I don't think that's particularly good. No, <laughs> like, it's not. Like, it's a bad set. Yeah, so I, I guess that, that seeding gives Edwin the win for the Melee Sat speed round after all the shit I talked about of not giving him the W before the show started. So you've got a minute to talk about whatever you want, Edwin. What's on your mind? How are you feeling? What do you want to talk about? Well, so I want to talk about Wombo Combo, and I was going to do that in the next segment, but I, I want to do it for a minute because I know... Uh, so Homemade Waffles, friend and fan of the show... 
and 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 guest on the show has been advertising it a lot but i really think more people should pay attention to it i know i know this weekend is smash ultimate's release and everyone's really excited for the new game as as they should be both casual and competitive players of life but if you're a melee fan like do check out this tournament there's a lot of really good west coast talent going to it and it's not necessarily like nationally ranked talent but it's it's a lot of like good players that are outside of the top 100 or ne or not necessarily that active but you get to see them like perform in a, in a local region. So players like Azusa, players like uh, he'll probably be ranked, but like Cactar, um, people like Ralph uh, from SoCal, Zio, uh, YCC Six. Shout out to Leon. Just a lot of really cool local local talent going to this event, and it's to c celebrate Melee's biggest, literally its most popular moment ever. So definitely check it out if you got a chance this weekend. Hell yeah! Nice and wholesome. Oh, hell yeah! Uh, so that would move us into our final subject. I kind of alluded to it before. There's a big weekend coming up. There's this big thing coming out. And Edward, you can jump back right into it. The the Wombo Combo Tournament. Yes, the, the big thing yeah, happening this the weekend. the biggest thing coming up. Yeah, literally nothing else. So my, my pick for the headline of the week is intentionally going to be just entirely melee focused. Mm -hmm. I think S2J is going to have a big weekend. Or, or sorry, not S2J, excuse me. I think Pew Pew is going to have a really big <laughs> weekend this uh, I, I was just thinking about it earlier. I think, I think Pew Pew is going to have a really big weekend and win Wombo Combo. He's going to defeat SJ and SFAT or one of them twice to win the tournament. And everyone's going to be like, oh, Pew Pew, you know, he hasn't entered that much lately. It's good to see him do well. This is a, this is a tournament where I think he's going to going to make a splash his records against people in his field are pretty solid so my prediction for the headline of next week will be pupu dominates the field at a uh, wombo combo or is pupu top 10 or something <laughs> of, like extremely re extremely impulsive and i can't like wait that. to see that on like the the fourth page of r slash smash bros yeah or ssb congrats to the winner of yeah, someone is going to talk about why Pew that why PPU is like better than a why PPU is better than S Fat on the year or something. That's my prediction. I do think generally PPU gets a little underrated just because he's he's he kind of falls like into the S Fat vein of he just like beats the players he should generally besides Faust and then like d loses to players he should lose to. I think he's a really really solid player. Yeah, he's. He, the, the only like thing that really stands out as far as awful losses, like he, he's a friend of the show, so no, but I think even Faust would admit that him beating Pew Pew is kind of an aberration from a typical trend. Mm -hmm. But yeah. other, other than that, like Pew Pew is mostly pretty, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. So that's my pick. And is there is there any other because this is kind of with the one you're looking into for the weekend? Is there any other players maybe that less people would know that you think could have a potential to do pretty well, get their name out there? Maybe like that last push into the top 100 here. Uh, you know, oh, Oven, do you have anything you want to say about Azusa? Because he hasn't really, I haven't really seen I don't, much. I don't know. Lately. Yeah, me neither. To be honest, I know. I seem to remember him losing to someone not too good. Maybe it was like someone good, but like a secondary. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. I haven't really heard much about him. And I don't think he does. He have the like. Has he like attended that much? I don't think he has. I just like I remember last year and, and maybe slightly before that Azusa was kind of on that. He, not not hidden boss, but people locally here in his region talked really highly of him. And then this year, he just kind of, for for whatever reason, he just didn't have the results. Yeah. But who uh, knows? Maybe maybe he has a big performance here. I, I think. Also, yeah, sorry, go on. So is is Azil at the tournament? Yeah, he is. That could be someone who does pretty well that people don't really talk about too much. Yeah, Azul, the former, uh, now he's ranked, but the former Arcadian winner in Nor NorCal, he's pretty good. He kind of, uh, skill-wise at least, I think he's, like, based based on eye test, he he exists in the same, like, headspace, like, of maybe being half a tier below someone like Lint. Like, he's, he's, like, he's a rising Falco, Falco star. I think, I think next year could be a really big breakout year for him. So maybe if he does well this tournament, it kind of give us a, 
glimpse into what may be the start of a promising top hundred career or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, for other uh, for other notable names of this tournament, of course, we we can't go without um, mentioning, of course, Silent Specter and Tang, and Lucky and Zoo being here also. The the historic combination. I, I believe they're doing an exhibition a double set so that should be fun at least for old, old time's sake mm-hmm. yep uh anyways that's my my that's your, wombo, your wombo combo yeah. exposition all right so oven mm-hmm. what's your uh, of all the things you could talk about coming up that are big this weekend what do, what do you got what's what do you have in mind well there's another tournament coming up that is absolutely massive it's bridgetown hyper blitz featuring europe Washington, Ontario, uh, other West Coast. Uh, so my headline mm-hmm. is going to be, you won't believe which European player none lost to at Bridgetown Blitz. <laughs> Dude, is Nebby none going to happen? Nevi beats none. Does Nevi make no? Nevi probably doesn't have the attendance requirements for top one hundred. Uh, yeah, I think he he would have had to attend a lot more. Yeah, he exists like, again, like kind of like what I was saying with Azul, but probably at a higher level. Like Nevi exists in that headspace of being players that like maybe with enough attendance could yeah. could do with the right bracket. <laughs> There's lots of different European players that are going to this tournament, though. There's I'll just list off the ones that are big. Professor Pro. Uh, Nebby, Nikki, Posse, Timmy, Glory, uh, Frenzy, lots of ending in E sounds. <laughs> I think Timmy and Timmy in particular is a is a talent that I've I've been hearing a lot of a, a lot of mention of. He's yeah. supposed to be really good. And Who wouldn't surprise me? A lot of these well. guys are also going to be at Dome Park the next weekend, right? So like, yeah. if they put out a good uh, showing there. I mean, yeah, they they could just build. Imagine one of the one of them just building a resume between those two tournaments and making top one hundred from that. That would be wild. Like Nevi Nevi wins both tournaments. No, that's the, <laughs> that's the future I want to see. Two top two top hundred Yoshi's. Yeah, I that mean, that'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely the potential for some upsets at this and Dote Park. But this is the one that's coming up next week. Mm. So remember to take a look at that. Whenever Oven, I, I, I forget if you mentioned him his name already, but is Hugs going to this? Hyper Town? Hyper Blitz? Yeah. Uh he's doesn't appear to be. Uh, I was gonna say maybe we get a Hugs, another no. chapter in Hugs Calm Master. Oh god. Oh. We get another chapter in Hugs Calm Master and then another chapter in Nun Hugs. <laughs> I think Hugs Calm Master might be Melee's most simultaneously cool and boring rivalry is it better than fiction ginger yeah because this actually has a history like they both go back to 2008 okay any anything else at bridgetown for either you guys uh army is there he could do something (laughs) (laughs) he could could wobble a lot (laughs) who would be your your predicted winner at bridgetown I like it. I have to say none because like he won the script. He's been doing pretty well. Mm. Like he missed Summit, but like not by much. And it's like, yeah, it's he's just doing really well. I have to see the bracket to. to Yeah, I would have to see the bracket as well. Uh, Unfortunately, registration is well. Fortunately, new registration is still open. So. We can't see the bracket, but you could still register if you're in the area. Oven, you're not going to Dome Park or this tournament, are you? I'm going to Dome Park. Oh, word. Sick. Yeah. I'm not going to this one because uh, it would be kind of weird to go all the way down to Oregon and then go back up to Canada and then yeah. literally like a couple <laughs> weeks go down back down to Washington. I'm going to say that... Um... I think without looking at the bracket, I'm just going to assume that probably probably none wins this. But I want to see Nebby versus Army. I wonder how uh, mm. wonder how that'd turn out. I don't know. I don't know Nebby's experience against ice climbers, and I know Army. I think Army's part of like that crew with Nez Mod God, so it's it's not like he's 
he would be cool. Mez will also against... be at this tournament. So yeah, cool. Yeah, it's not like Army has no idea what to do against Yoshi. Just should be interesting to see how he and Nebby do against each other. Because I think Yoshi destroys Ice Climber from that matchup. Who knows? Uh, what happens if Army runs into none? I think our army like army three wins. one. Yeah. 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 None. And none. He, I don't think he tweets mid set. Like he. Might, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> none he, will he win. He drafts it, it, but he doesn't send it out. <laughs> none will. Uh, he'll win a game with Ganon on Yoshi's, and that will be it. And I guess like you mentioned, Commaster already, but do you think Bladewise has like anything he can do here? Uh. I don't know, man. He gets like seventh, fifth. Like that's 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 kind of what we expect from him, right? Yeah. This kind of crowd. Yeah. Although you know he he had a lost or European earlier this year, so maybe you know he loses the Lavingi. What if what if Timmy beats Bladewise? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I won't bet against someone. I won't bet on someone upsetting Bladewise though. I feel like seventh or fifth is probably where where yeah, he'll end up. That's all for him. He'll beat Hugs if they play. That's 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 a, that's my other thing. Hugs signs up last minute. <laughs> oh, we're, oh, we're right. Oh, right. Sorry, we, we're talking about this tournament, not Dope Park. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. Were you talking about Dope Park this whole time? <laughs> no, no, I just forgot that Hugs is going to do- Hugs wasn't going to this. What a why do I think Hugs is? Why do I just think Hugs is compelled to go somewhere where Ka Master is? <laughs> he has to go. He has to. I go must. Go. <laughs> I must. Yeah. Okay. All right. that, so, that's all I have to say. Do we want to all talk right. about as this uh, really great bit that I was very good at hiding? Um, actually, talk about ultimate because I know Edwin's skeptical. Alvin, I don't really know what your thoughts or lack. I've already of... played ultimate. Am I allowed to talk about that? <laughs> did, did you? <laughs> you played it in a legal. You played it at one of those Best Buys, right, or something? You played it. In a totally sure. Legal way. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we're, we're what a nerd <laughs> well if you're if you're the one who's actually played a beat between us what do you think of it uh it's more fun than smash 4 uh so that's not saying much. okay okay yeah. i'd Sick. hope so hopeful <laughs> hopeful uh i'd say it's probably the second most fun i've had playing or an actual smash game I still enjoy PM probably a little bit more, but I don't know. It's I'll play it. I'll play it for a bit. I'll go to a couple tournaments. I've already entered. I'm already entered for Ultimate at Don't Park. So yeah. we'll see how see how it actually lines up when I'm actually playing against people who want to win and who want to like time me out and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know how much that there's right. gonna be. This would probably be more a question in your vein, Edwin, and it's probably really hard to call at this point. How do you feel about uh, ultimate staying power? Like, will it be like Smash 4 and as soon as... it Well, there's slated to not be another Smash game after it, but do you feel like this game is going to die as soon as the next one comes out, or do you think it might... I mean, that's so far down the line, but do you think this game has staying power? You look so <laughs> unamused. I feel like I know what you're about I to mean... say. As long as Smash is making money, <clears throat> and as long as the series is selling, or, or as long as people like the game enough when they're getting it, how's the answer not like? How, how can you not be skeptical of this sort of thing? You know, like people aren't gonna like the the kind of players that it, it's kind of like Smash is heading in a direction that's kind of flirting with developer support. And like the players that are playing the newer games, like people, right when Ultimate was announced, you had like Smash Four players changing their Twitter Twitter bios and shit to Smash Ultimate player. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I'm yeah. not denying that they like certainly they they love the Smash series. I'm, I don't. Uh, I'm not skeptical of their genuine or their sincere love for Smash or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just think that like the circumstances that lead to the staying power of a game like Melee are so um, are so unique. Melee, Melee is a perfect storm of a lot of those things. And, you know, I'm not saying that, like, Melee is better or worse. It's better. But, like, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's, like, not like, if you play Melee, you're a better person or whatever. Like, you, you can play whatever, you can play whatever <laughs> game you want. That's a logical jump. No, I said you. Yeah, no, 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 no. But, like, <laughs> continue. I just wanted to point that out. I just, it's it's hard to describe. It's, it's just, like, the... 
you have to consider Melee's unique circumstances that allows it to survive sequels. And I don't think the other Smash games have that sort of staying power. They, I, I guess 64, but again, that's that's an older game. Like, I don't see any of the... Like, as long as the Smash series is alive and people keep updating it, I, I really doubt that there will be such a perfect storm of factors that lead games to have the same staying power as Melee in 64. So you don't think Ultimate's going to kill Melee? That's what Twitter's no. telling me. That's what Reddit <laughs> says. Melee's Dude. Like, they have wave dashing in the game. That's all we play Melee for. That's it. They have DK in the game. Like, why would <laughs> they I play? Have DK, that's all you need. And they have little DK too. Like, why would there's two? Why would I ever play Melee as one DK? It's just like I, I know you're memeing, but like yeah. you do bring up an interesting point that like people think that people think that like the reason uh, Melee players or serious Melee players don't switch is because there's no wave dashing. It's like it's like, dude, we don't give a shit about wave dashing. Like. Mm-hmm. There's so much more about melee that makes it like a unique, uniquely fun game. It's mm-hmm. it's not that it's not that there's no wave dashing in future games, and that's why we don't like. That's that's just kind of a caricature, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, and I think ultimate, if if it's as good as people are saying, I'm I'm getting it on Friday. I'm hosting a uh, I'm hosting an ultimate party. My uh, my fiance is gonna bring her friends over who are kind of big into gaming. And uh, okay, so this this will transition to actually a a pretty uh weird story that i guess serves as a good point for the show so my fiance and i go out sunday morning humble brain go and hang yeah we we go out and hang out hang with a couple of her friends they're they're home they're they're all from the same hometown i'm kind of the outsider so they asked me to introduce myself like because i haven't met some of them we all get to know each other so and you go, hey, I'm Edwin Budding. No, let me get to that. So, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so my fiance is like her best friend from college or from high school says like, oh yeah, you know, my, my boyfriend is really into Smash 4. Like his favorite player is Nairo and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. I'm into Melee. And she's like, yeah, he's more into Smash 4, but he watches all the Melee major streams and thinks it's really cool and everything. And then she asked me like, oh, so like, what's your tag? And of course I'm I'm embarrassingly like, oh, you know, uh, I don't know. My, like I, I, do, I do a podcast on Melee and I write articles. Like my name is Edwin Budding, right? So he... Uh, so I'm like, oh, just tell him my name's Edwin Budding. She texts him. He responds, it's like, Edwin Budding? I watch the Melee Stats podcast every week. Of course I know who Edwin Budding is. And, I, and I'm I just like, you. oh, it's just the weirdest feeling, dude. Mm-hmm. Just the digital world, personal world. Basically what I'm saying is I'm a celebrity now. You're a big and, star. Uh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> we called it this is a fake story it's not a fake story it's not. this, this is actually happened. this was your engagement present from your fiance she was like she said all oh, this no up. she's her friend <laughs> from high school texted her boy no friend. i was literally there no that'd be so <laughs> fucked up this is all just like a ploy to make me feel good about myself <laughs> no <laughs> End the show. I don't want to explain myself anymore. All right, well, you got to do the ending show spiel. Oh, you got to thank I everyone. I do. I, I actually have to uh, thank a new... Uh, oh, a new, yeah. New... Okay, so... Uh, all right, boys. Let me get this out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys. The big, the big star, Edwin Budding. Okay. Thank you, Alex Vuksinich, Carlos A. Robles, David Shearer, Etost, Greg Schaefer, Jack Harmoning, Jason Kelly, JM, Joey Danowitz, Jorgen Stenhammer, Matthew Biddle, Ozzy and Breton, Potato, Stock Money, Ted Darkside, a new patron, and Videotape. Thank you guys so much for your support. So I was just yeah. having something interesting on the screen while you talked. But I do, again, really appreciate your guys' support over the Patreon. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, there should be a link down in the description to do that on the VOD, or someone can throw it in the chat right now. And if you don't feel like shilling out money to us, but still want to communicate with us and kind of talk to everyone else, there is a Discord server where we occasionally pop in and debate on everything from sports to how much we think Ultimate is going to suck. Or be good. <laughs> gotta, gotta tell both sides. Yeah. So we got a good cop, bad cop. 
But I think that about does it for this this very weird episode up for this weird week of melee. I think it's very fitting. We we've got our finger on the pulse of melee, and sometimes it's it's just weird when we have D list celebrities like Edwin Budding on our show. <laughs> <laughs> And deal it and dealist characters like Donkey Kong playing a uh, <laughs> big role in the background. Uh, All right, thanks, guys. guys. Yeah, see.